What is going on YouTube? It is me, the stinkiest, smelliest console camo grinding king, back again with another ultimate camo guide, this time for zombies, both for Borealist and Bioluminescent. The Serpent Tonight camo and Arachnida camo, anything that you need to be done in zombies, any tip, trick, guide, how to, helpful bit of information you can find for zombies, it's gonna be here in this video. We're gonna have it all nice and segmented out, timestamps in the description, chapters in the video, all that good stuff. Shout out to my editor, he can do all that work for me because I ain't gonna do any of that. I'm just gonna say you record the video, give you all the tips and all the tricks that there are. So make sure that you sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, grab your notes, and be ready to go. First things first, we got this fine little handy dandy spreadsheet. We are back, back with the same spreadsheet we used for the MW3 multiplayer grind. Except this time it's even better. It's even easier to use. So make sure you hit, make sure you check out the description for this exclamation mark spreadsheet. It is in there. I 1000% recommend that you have this up on either a laptop or iPad, your phone or another monitor or whatever. If you can use this while grinding, this makes life so much easier. There's a lot of things to do. A lot of challenges are very similar, but different for different guns. A lot of guns to do. This grind can go a lot quicker if you've got this up to optimize your efficiency and all that, all that nerdy stuff. So I definitely strongly recommend you use something like this to make your life way, way, way easier. I used it for both the MW3 guns and for the MW2 guns, as you can see, I'm not finished with all the MW2 guns. We still got about 25 guns left to go at the time of recording. I just did the bare minimum required to unlock Bioluminescent. And then we are going to work on the rest uh, between the time I'm recording this video and uh, Warzone 2's drop. So one quick thing to point out there is for the MW3 guns, my Warfare 3 guns, there are 36 guns in the game right now. You need to do all 36. I'm not sure when a new... MW3 gun is going to be added. I, I was under the impression it would have been added already, so I have no idea. When that gun does get added, uh, you are going to have the opportunity to swap out one gun for it, but you got to be careful because you still are going to need to have the, the main important thing you're working towards is you need to have 50, you need to have 36 spinal husk camos complete. You got to have 36 of these, and to have these, you have to have an entire category gold. So say they add a new, the rumor is a new LMG. All you can do really is replace one LMG or if you want to replace something with the launcher. But the launcher, again, this is not this is not multiplayer. The launcher is really, really easy to use in zombies. If you get sleight of hand, speed cola, and flopper, launcher is going to fly by, so that one is not too hard. I think overall, in, in terms of best guns versus worst guns in zombies, as in multiplayer, uh, you know, multiplayer, you had the grenade launcher, hands down the worst gun. Then you had, like, the sidewinder. That also sucked. Then you had, like, the river shotgun. That was really bad. Zombies, grenade launcher, fine no problem sidewinder fine no problem that shotgun though that's gonna be that's that takes my cake for the worst gun across both categories that shotgun sucks in multiplayer and it sucks in zombies so that shotgun's gonna be your biggest problem the grenade launcher super easy again all you have to do is get the 250 kills for its base challenge so simple knives melee weapons super easy all the secondaries are easy i would say the snipers are probably some of your hardest things to do because they just shoot way slower it is way takes you just longer to get a lot of these kills with a bolt action gun as opposed to something that shoots fully automatic. One thing a lot of people ask me is, what's harder? The MW3 multiplayer grind or the Mono for Zombies grind? Is for Realist harder or is Interstellar harder? And I put it this way. The Interstellar grind took me 75 hours to do. The Bo Realist grind started it at 100 hours into the stream, already had all my guns max leveled, and it still took me an extra 20 hours to do. Granted, I was sleeping in between this stuff, but overall it took me way longer to do the zombies grind same amount of guns same exact guns it took me it took me hours and hours longer to do this grind with all my guns already maxed level and as you guys know leveling up the guns is the thing that takes the longest zombies is way longer of a grind but it's also what i would consider way less stressful zombies you can sit back relax you're playing on controller you can let the aim assist do literally all the work and play the game for you it is so much easier and more chill to play zombies you're not fighting real people you're not fighting skill-based matchmaking you're not dealing with sweat slide canceling trying out you know scumps disciples you're not fighting any of those you're fighting a bunch of zombies zombies that run at you and just try and swing at you ai super duper easy to deal with super easy to fight against multiplayer um multiplayer again you're fighting against a bunch of sweats you're losing your mind sweating in skill-based matchmaking one thing i'll say is is multiplayer is a lot more of the extremes multiplayer you're going to lose your mind a lot more it's going to be a lot stressful shorter grind again it's going to be a lot more stressful but well, multiplayer has the potential for fun, you know? You're popping a four-piece, you're popping a five-piece, you're hitting a sick, nasty, crazy clip in multiplayer, that's bringing a rush 
dopamine, serotonin, happiness, enjoyment, all that you're clipping that you're posting to Twitter. None of that's happening in zombies. On, on either end, you're not losing your meow. mind fighting sweats. Yo, meow that out for me, please. You're not losing your mind fighting sweats. You're also not hitting crazy clips. You're not popping a six piece on zombies and going to Twitter and telling all your friends you're nasty, you're the next scump. You're not doing that. So it just kind of removes the extremes and it's just a nice chill middle ground. You can sit there, listen to music, vibe out, you know, do your thing, have a show up, a YouTube video up, another stream up while watching that and vibing on zombies. Super, um, super, you know, laid back, chill. Whereas multiplayer can piss you off, can also be a lot of fun. But the yeah, main thing is multiplayer is a lot shorter of a grind. Multiplayer doesn't take anywhere near as long. Zombies just takes long. Multiplayer, you've got challenges like get 50 kills while aiming down sights. Get 15 headshots. Get 25 kills while attack stings. In multiplayer, that's super easy. That, that, that can be done in one 5 to 10 minute long game. Super duper simple, super easy. Get 3 kills with 1 mag 10 times. You could do that in one, maybe two games. One to two 10 minute long games. That gets done super fast. In zombies, you've got the challenges of 300 critical kills you've got 30 hellhounds that one's not too hard 250 hit fire kills and now since you're if you're watching this video the exfil method where you just sit in exfil call it in over and over again and you constantly kill zombies that has been changed that has been nerfed patched whatever you want to call it that is no longer effective uh now the best way to do things is to do contracts and stuff or just run around the map and just kill zombies this takes noticeably longer this is definitely a way longer it was already longer and now it is noticeably way longer to just get kills in general Yeah, the hard part of the zombies grind is finding zombies. It's finding kills. Multiplayer again, you don't have very many kills you have to get. You just, you know, they have they make you do something hard and you have to fight sweats while going for challenges. Zombies, chill vibes. It's really easy to get hip fire kills with a gun in zombies. It just you gotta do 250 zombies. You gotta find 250 zombies. Or when you're going for, we'll get to this later. When you're going for the serpentine camel, find 10 special zombies or find 10 disciples or find 10 mangoes. That's the hard part. Is finding the zombies to kill and not actually killing them. What I found to be just in general, again, the hardest part is finding zombies to kill. What I found to be the most effective way, the easiest way to just jump right into a game and kill as many zombies as possible. You got three different ways you can do this. So there's some arguments going on about what, which of these is the absolute most effective. Um, I found the two, the two that were very, very similar and how effective they were is the spore control contract, not in the tier two zone, definitely in the tier one zone. Uh, this map doesn't have any of them on there. But a spore control anywhere in the tier one zone, you grab that. And what you want to do is with all six spore egg things, you want to throw your interceptor trophy. With the spore's vibrational frequency. I should have blown you after that. You want to throw the, the trophy system on all six eggs, activate them, don't destroy any of them, just leave them going. That makes the most maximum amount of zombies. Ideally, you want to be like in the center of as many of the of the eggs as possible you want to be like in the center area if you can get a bunch of them clustered together that's what you call an ideal spawn uh you want to get as many of them as close together as possible that that bumps up the amount of zombies that are going to spawn near you but i i personally found the sport control to be the most effective a lot of people were saying again not in the tier two zone more in the tier one the outlast contract you get an outlast in the tier one you get that to like 75 80 percent and you just keep hopping in and out of the building to keep it around that percentage that's going to get the maximum amount of zombies to spawn in the one thing I absolutely hated about this the most is the dogs. I just found the dogs to be so annoying. If I wasn't going for a challenge where I needed to kill hellhounds, I just found them very annoying to deal with. They would constantly blow up and steal the zombie kills. They would just be, they would, they run faster. They made me have to aim lower. They were just annoying. I didn't want to deal with the dogs. So I personally didn't like the outlast. I found that any difference in, you know, a couple more zombie kills was negated by the annoying ass dogs. So a lot of people would say a tier one, outlast contract was the way i said a tier two or a tier one spore contract was the way and then towards the end i got really bored of just grabbing a contract and just leaving it and just not finishing it and just sitting in one area just killing zombies i got really bored oh look there's a spore right there um i got really bored just sitting in one spot and not finishing the contract so i started doing just the tier one escorts are they really more effective at more zombies i don't necessarily think so i think more zombies come in at once while doing this contract, if you just ride the tank and shoot them all, I think it's more zombies, but you finish the contract and the zombie stops spawning it. Then you gotta go drive to another contract, do it all over again. I think it's a shorter spree of more zombies, but overall, long term, it's gonna be less because it's not just a constant wave of zombies coming at you. 
but it was more fun to me. I found it wasn't, again, it wasn't the most effective or optimized way of doing it. It was just more fun to just be actually completing a contract and be moving around doing stuff rather than just sitting in one area killing zombies over and over again. That was the way that I, towards the end, started doing was just a bunch of escort contracts over and over again. Then as you finish a bunch of contracts, if you want, if you got your guns high enough level, you get you usually, realistically, to be able to even go in, you want your gun to be pack-a-punched one level below. So if you're going to the tier 2 zone, you want at least a pack-a-punched 1 gun. If you're going into the tier 3 zone, you want at least a pack-a-punched 2 gun. Otherwise, your gun is not even going to hurt them at all. If you want to be killing them, if you want to be farming that area, you want at least an even pack-a-punch gun at blue or above rarity. So if you're going to be farming zombies in the tier 2 zone, you want a double pack-a-punch gun that's at least blue, if not purple or orange. You're going to be farming in here like an absolute psychopath. I never did that once, so I don't know why you would. You're going to want at least a pack-a-punch 3 gun and at least purple, if not orange, to even be able to hurt the zombies. And even then, the amount of bosses that spawn in, I don't see it being worth it. But if you want to be a psycho, more power to you. But yeah, again, that's a, that's as you do more contracts and you get a bunch more money. And rather than, because again, you don't exfil, you don't gain anything from exfiling with that money. It's not like you can take it out and bring it back into the next game. Uh, if you take that money, if you want to spend that money rather than taking it out, you can do that as the game goes on. You can upgrade your guns and spend more time in the higher threat zones doing, again, the same concept. Same concept of the contracts, just in, in the difficult more zones, more difficult zones. Most guns, most guns have the same simple, like, you know, formula for how you're going to do some of these challenges. The base camo challenge, 250 kills. Base challenge, once you get the gun high enough level, you just need to get kills it. Don't even worry about that one. Don't even focus on that one because chances are you're going to have another challenge that's going to need you to get 250 kills, but with some kind of stipulation. The MTZ 556, for example. 250 kills with full attachments, with five attachments on your gun. If you have your gun max level, that should be no problem. Just throw five attachments on. The one thing about this, though, is if you are going for multiple guns in one game, you're trying to be a demon and get as much done as possible. A lot of the mystery box guns, if you are still early into the game, you know, the blue, purple, green rarity ones you're going to find or off the wall as well, those are not going to have five attachments. So mainly, the main thing about this one is 250 kills with your insured slot weapon. That's how you want to look at this one. But your main... Your main goal to be as efficient as possible with this is you want to combine as many challenges as you possibly can into one. You want to essentially just not waste any kills. You want to not spend any time getting kills that you're just going to have to redo again. There's no point in you getting 250 kills if you don't have full attachments on your gun and you're just going to have to get all those kills again. There's no point in you getting 250 kills with full attachments on your gun if you don't have four perks and you're just going to have to get those 250 kills with full attachments on your gun again with four perks yeah the 10 times get 20 kills without getting hit that is one of the harder challenges it, hardest challenges you can do in zombies is you actually have to pay attention and not get hit one time with the zombies and pay attention to how many kills i'm pretty sure that if you get 40 kills without getting hit i don't think it counts i think you have to get 20 kills the way i was keeping track of this was the jackrabbit challenge even though for some reason it says 30 kills without getting hit that's your 20 kill mark you can count it out get your 20 kills then let a zombie hit you once your 20 kills this all together adds up for 200 kills so main concept i went without with, with through the entire grind is whatever is the hardest or takes the most attention or whatever challenge i'm going to be left with that's the one you focus on all those extra 250 kills you know 250 kills attack stance versus 200 critical kills the critical kills are going to be harder i'm going to be i'm going to have that one left so focus on getting your critical kills first and then get your extra attack stance skills very often, I was left as my last challenge was the 20 kills without getting hit. So focus right away. Get your 200. That's 200 out of the 250 kills. Get your 200 kills without getting hit. Challenge done. And then by then, you should only have a handful of kills left to get uh, with your four perks or your full attachment. And that's just one example. That's just one example. Again, there's, I've done 70 plus guns, 51 plus 36. I've done 77 different guns this entire grind to get uh, all these guns gold. And that was kind of the main. These are these are some kind of things that I didn't necessarily put into the grind right away that I learned after the fact. Another challenge that would fall into that is the boss kills, the special kills. Get five mimics or kill five. Where are they at? Um, ten disciple kills, and then the other one was ten mangler kills. Those were those were very very oftentimes those are the last challenge that I would have left on a gun. So I recommend you go for those first. You try and knock out that challenge as fast as possible right away. Because chances are that's going to be your last challenge left. You're going to get your 250 kill in the process of getting those 10 special kills. Look. Oh, oh, kitty cat. Do not look at me, you calm out grinding, no showering little bitch. Hey, kitty cat. Okay, which brings us perfectly right on into our next step. The hardest part, the hardest, part, the hardest challenge is 
I would say realistically are the Disciple kills, the Mimic kills, and the Mangler kills. The hardest part about these is where to find these bosses. We got this nice little handy dandy map. So the hardest part about the entire grind is again, finding things to kill both. Finding zombies or finding the bosses, the Disciples, the Mimics, the Manglers. The best way I would say to find Mimics is there's three, there's three different ways I would do. Either the Tier 1 bounties, you can do Tier 2. Tier 2 has a chance of showing Mimics, but they tend to be harder, and it also pulls to Tier 2 Disciples and Tier 2 Manglers, which are going to have way extra health. One thing you'll notice about bounties is the, um, the bosses that you have to kill with bounties have names. They're, named, they're not just Mimic. They're Malagthor, the Mimic Destroyer, I don't know, some Wizard of Warcraft type shit. Um, so they have names, and therefore they have double to triple the extra health, and they are way stronger and harder to kill. So I would, I, I personally strayed away from doing too many bounties in the higher threat zones. I would just do them in the, in the basic, um, low tier zone for nice, easy, quick zombie kills. Yeah, the, the tier one bounties is a good way to get mimics. Another way is you can either do either the tier one infested strongholds, which sometimes you have to go in, you have to clear out the cysts and then attempt to open a box to get them to spawn. I personally wasn't a fan of that, even though that was a good way. You only usually have to kill five mimics. It's not that hard. Um, but one thing I found way more success with was the tier two infested strongholds. One thing I would do with these, I was as I was driving from point A to point B or whatever, if I needed mimic kills, I would stop by one of these real quick, go on the outside of the building, and you just shoot, just shoot at a quick zombie real quick. If there's any mimics inside, they will come running outside of you. You don't even have to go inside. I personally hated going inside these infested strongholds. I found them very annoying. I'm constantly putting my gas mask on and off, fighting the cysts. I looking for the cysts. I hated it. I would not go into the infested strongholds too much if I didn't have to. I would just go right on the outside, shoot, Mimic would come out. Usually as long as your gun was Pack-A-Punch 1, they died super, super fast, super easily because, again, they didn't have a name, they weren't a boss, they were just a basic Mimic. That's what I found to be the easiest way to kill Mimics was Tier 1 strongholds, uh, sometimes Tier 1 bounties, sometimes because they only have a, a certain chance of pulling a Mimic, or the most effective way I found was a Tier 2 stronghold. Just drive through the Tier 2 real quick, shoot outside of a stronghold, Usually there were two mimics in them. I wouldn't go to the tier three strongholds. That was a little too too much of the scary zone. Nothing you have to do for the entire camo grind requires you to go into the pits of hell, the red zone as I called it. Nothing requires you to go in there. Um, so I just kind of stuck the entire camo grind. I spend most of my time in tier one or tier two, not in tier three. Yeah, the each infested stronghold has two mimics. So you go in, you, you shoot, you get the two mimics to come out, bam, you go to another one, bam, you do one bounty in the tier one zone, bam, there's your five mimics that you need for a gun. Done. Just like that. Manglers next. Manglers. Manglers, I found, were the absolute easiest to, um, to kill, the easiest ones to find and make them spawn four ways. There's four ways to find manglers. So I'm going to go um, in order, like, the least best to the best. The tier two outlast contract. If you can grab one of these in the orange zone, again, not in the, not in the basic zone, not in the pits of hell, um, the basic zone doesn't spawn any bosses. Uh, this one is the one that spawns bosses. You, 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 you grab this. Uh, this one, I think, pulls to this building. And you go in there, and you get like 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%. Somewhere in there, you get the contract to a good percentage, so it starts spawning the bosses, and then you get out of the building. You get out of the building, so it stops going up. Essentially, you just never complete this contract. The Tier 2 one spawns just Disciples and Mimics. Just kind of like 50-50 chance of having both of them. No names, so they're relatively easy to kill as long as you have like a Pack-A-Punch 1 green gun. That's usually good enough. To and um, you just sit there. And what I found the most effective way to get this done is I would have one gun. I would have one gun that needed me to kill 10 manglers. And then I'd have another gun that needed me to kill 10 disciples. And I would use both these guns at the same time. I would go into the I would go into the outlast in the tier two. One gun pack punch is how I did so efficiently. One gun pack punch, at least green, if not blue. And that would be the gun I do all the shooting with. I do all the shooting. And then I if that's the gun that needs the manglers, I'll kill the manglers with it. If the if um the other gun needs disciples, I'll hurt the disciples. I'll make them to where they're like a couple shots to kill. Then I'll switch to my other non pack a punch basic gun. That way I didn't have to waste any resources. Um, I'd switch to that gun and then I get the kill shot. That way I don't have to spend you know 500 bullets doing all the damage to this disciple, the guy that heals himself. Um, I would do two things at once there. But again, so as long as you don't finish the outlast contract, that just keeps a constant wave. A constant wave of just regular tier one zombies and bosses, both both manglers and disciples. So this is an effective way to get disciple kills and mangler kills. But again, you're in the tier two zone, so you need at least a pack a punch gun. So unless you have the resources in your stash ready to go to drop into the game and pack a punch your gun right away, it's gonna take you some time to get. 
which is why I don't necessarily recommend this as the most effective way to get it done, the most, you know, optimized use of your time. But that is, again, that is one of the good ways to get Mangler kills. Another, another, you know, the third best way that I found was there are hotspots. There's what I call hotspots on the map uh, in the medium threat tier two zone. There are certain places on the map that are more likely to spawn. Uh, there are more likely to spawn just any kind of special bosses, disciples, manglers, more, more so those two, disciples and manglers, also mimics as well. A couple of the areas that I found throughout the entire grind that just have an increased chance of spawning the bosses. Uh, we're just going to go around the whole orange area. We got this little marketplace right here, this whole place. I've seen multiple manglers and disciples spawn here. Uh, this warehouse, this warehouse right here has, um, I've seen a mangler and a disciple spawn there. That's also a common bounty pull. You pull like this bounty, there's a very high chance it spawns right there. Common areas. Uh, one spot that I would always check this building right here usually has a gun on the on the uh, on the wall. Just this little little turn right here and this little park right here. So this whole general area has an increased chance of manglers and disciples to spawn in. Um, a disciple, I I very often see a disciple right here. That's another spot. Um, you've got this little construction area, this little whole area. You can see them walking around a lot. And then my personal favorite, my go to spot that I would always check every time I drive across this highway was this little L right here. This little L, they'd spawn right here, right in this general area, and then right around here, one and one each. Very easy, you just drive by, pop out, they have no names, they don't have that much health. You have a pack-a-punch, one gun, it can be green, they die super fast, get out of your, get in your car, go back, drive somewhere else. So the hot spots, as I call them, would be another, what I find to be effective way of killing manglers, disciples, specials in general. And then the second best way that I find to find manglers is if you just do, again, the same thing with the mimics, is the tier one, the tier one bounties. If you just hop in a car, drive to a bounty contract, get the bounty contract, drive to the bounty, kill the bounty, back in your car, drive to another bounty contract, you just change those bounties together. You're only, the downside is they have names, so they take a little bit longer to kill, but if you're in the tier one zone, it's not that hard. Um, and then two is you're only doing one at a time. So you you get in your car, you're driving here, you kill one, you get in your car, you drive to another bounty, you drive, you kill two, and that just takes you so long just, and, and a whole lot of driving. Me personally, a whole lot of opportunities for me to get distracted and go off and do something else that I don't need to be doing. But it is also, it is A, a good way to, you know, guarantee you're guaranteed to kill a special zombie, so more so for the final serpentine slash arachnida camel. That's an easy way to do that. Um, but if you're looking for just manglers or just mimics, that's not a super duper effective way to get those done, but it is very easy. Uh, I did that a lot because I was also, you know, you get your contract done, so you're getting free money, which helps you upgrade your guns if you want to go into the orange zone. Or it's also giving you those rewards. That's how I got a lot of free perks or a lot of my schematics or a lot of my pack-a-punch rocks that I would bring and stow in my stash. That's that's one thing. You're doing a lot of contracts if you, with that method. So it's not really... The most effective way of getting the boss kills you're looking for but it does have some side benefits and then the way that i found was the absolute number one most effective way to kill mango is super easy i 100 percent recommend you doing this if this is your challenge is right here the escort the escort contracts in the tier one this thing spawns anywhere from three i've had all the way up to eight eight mangler spawn in the entire course of the escort you just get on top of the tank any zombie in front of you is running at the tank. The tank kills them. You don't have to worry about killing them. Any of the zombies behind you, they just start throwing things. They never hit you. You just sit on top of the tank, and you scan your environment. You look in a circle. You look for the mangers. You listen for the, for the metal clanking Iron Man noises. Beam them instantly. That, like, increases the speed, which is another, another one's going to spawn in. Yeah, again, you just do a couple of these, and that you are going to wipe out your manglers so fast. They, they have no names. They die super fast. Super easy. You don't even need to pack a punch your gun. That's what I was doing. That's what that's what my method would be to do. Drop in, find a car, drive right to an escort contract. Do that with my basic unpack punch gun. All the zombies die super fast and easy. The manglers die super fast and easy. That's a super easy way to farm both just special in general and specifically mangler kills. And you're getting as you do a couple of these, you're getting your contracts done. Then you can go and pack a punch your gun and go into the uh, higher threat zones and do the other methods. The only real downside with the escort contract is take this one for example you're gonna drive your car over to this escort you're gonna grab this contract you're gonna have to run over here the tank the tank then goes and it drives all the way along it takes you it's like a two to three maybe even four minute long process to do the contract so you got to kind of sit there and wait while doing this contract it takes a little while to get done it's not like a bounty where you just drive up kill him real quick move on to the next one so it takes a little bit longer and then the escort is going to go it goes on the same path every time it's going to take you all the way around all the way over up here 
then you have to run your happy little ass all the way back to your car. That takes another little process. This one over here, it, you you leave your car right here and you start the process. It drives you all the way around down over here. You got to leave your car and then you got to run all the way back and go get it again. So that's the only real downside of the armed escorts is you got to ride the tank the entire way. And then you got to go and run back to your car before driving to another one and repeating the process. And also I found when I was going through and that was the only contract I was looking for, the only one I was doing multiple times, there just wouldn't be any anywhere on the map or there wouldn't be any anywhere close to me on the map. Yeah, there wouldn't be any anywhere close to me. So I'd have to travel forever, which was what makes having a car throughout the entire game so handy. Or the one thing I didn't use that I just learned about after the grind is over, that we got this handy dandy little map for the uh, runic teleports or whatever you want to call them that I didn't really take advantage of the entire time. I wasn't too sure how they worked. I found this on Google to so whoever made this shout out to shout out to that guy, whoever it was that made this. Um, this handy dandy. I'm going to be make sure I use this for the rest of my grind to fast travel around. So the dots, I believe the dots represent a portal where you go and you shoot this code into the portal. And then it can, you know, if you shoot the code that the number I know, the one I know is number 23. I know M I upside down triangle. You go to any portal, you shoot in that code, it's going to teleport you to the tower in the middle of hell. And then you can jump off from there. But you can if you have this up, again on a second monitor or a picture on your phone or something like that if you are in this bottom right corner of the map and you really want to go to the top left corner of the map you don't want to have to go through the process of finding a car and driving all the way over there bang you you go up to the portal it costs you like a thousand to go through the portal you go to the portal shoot code 20 20 is triangle l wine glass bang shoot that go in the portal teleport easy peasy yeah, this was this was my first time running these portals. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. I had no clue what I was doing. I had never been in this building before. No idea how this works. And I just run into this bathroom. This portal's in the same spot in this bathroom all the time. This is what it looks like. You walk up, you're going to shoot the code. You know, like I just said, M-I, upside down triangle, sends you to the pit of hell. You know, M-L, arrow, whatever they're called. I think it's like the runic alphabet or something like that. If you if you just go and all you do is shoot one bullet. I thought I was such a genius, bro. I thought I just figured out the Easter egg second try. Absolutely no idea what I was doing. I did not know that there were 25 different codes. And it was so such a high likelihood that if I just shot a bunch of them, eventually it worked. I had no idea. I thought I was so smart with this. Yeah, you basically just shoot three codes, bang, 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 just like that. Opens a portal, costs you a thousand to go in. If you're doing contracts, a thousand shouldn't be any problem. Bang, you open it. And then bam, there it is. Then you open the portal up, open a portal up, and you go in and it takes you to whatever code you entered. It takes you to whatever code you entered. You see the code is on the wall right there. That's how you know where the different codes are on the map. There's the code on the wall right there. But yeah, that's a little fast travel method that, again, I didn't know the entire grind, but that is definitely something that is extremely useful. Uh, I recommend you save this somewhere and take advantage of it to go from anywhere on the map. Anytime, you know, you do all the armed escorts in the top right part of the map and there's one in the bottom left part of the map, bam, you just hop in that portal real quick, go to code number five, bang, cross the map just like that, easy peasy. That is definitely going to save you some time, uh, so I recommend you, you have that up. Uh, another thing that helped out for me personally during the entire grind was, I don't know if, what, what we should call it, if it should be inventory management stash, management preparation, resourceful economics and such or whatnot, but basically not wasting the, you know, valuable items that you get in game unnecessarily. Um, one thing I would never do is like towards the end of the game, if I'm using a green gun and I find a blue tool, and I'm on my way to Exfil, don't ever waste that because that blue tool is going to be useful for challenges like 250 kills at rare or above. So any gun that doesn't have that challenge, you don't want to waste that tool on that. Or another thing like your ammo mods. Um, I know one very common one where fire damage, get kills with fire damage. There's more rare, higher, rare, higher electricity damage. So you don't want to waste those ammo mods or those tools or what I call the pack rocks, the pack of punch rocks, the uh, raw ethereum crystal, or even the refined ethereum, or if you get super lucky enough to find a flawless one, you don't want to waste those when that's not benefiting you towards those challenge. It obviously can help you get things done, but especially like once you're in game, if you find them, I would bring those out and put them in my stash. As you can see, I have a pretty <clears throat> impressive stash full of items right here. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm not too sure how long until this gets patched, 
but if you want to glitch items into your stash uh if you ever wonder how people have a stash that has more than 10 items into it really simple all you got to do have a full stash i had 10 out of 10 in mine hover over some item in your backpack swap no sorry it says swap right there press the swap button go to your schematics go to pick any of them any schematic that you have that you might want to use bang bang i'm gonna just duplicate it just because jug so that right there, I, as you, you can choose any schematic right there. If I go into my stash now, 11 out of 10, and I just put that extra cannon jug right into my stash. That's how you can, you can have multiple items in your stash. I've heard some people say their stash goes all the way up to 30s. Mine, whenever I would have up to like 15 items in my stash, it would take random items out of my backpack when I came out, and it wouldn't bring them out with me. So be weary about that if you want too big of a stash. I really would only have a large stash. If you're going to have like, again, a bunch of really good items, don't put random like blue tools or green tools or weapon mods or things that aren't harder to find or aren't like super rare. Don't waste those uh, in your stash. If it means that you might have to give up something really good when you come out of the game. My rule of thumb that I found was between the number in the bottom left of my stash, 11, and my backpack. Combine those together, 19. 19 was the number of items I was allowed to come out with. So if I had 15 items in my stash, I was only allowed to bring four items in my backpack. If I tried to bring like this, these five items, one random thing was going to get taken out of the backpack. I didn't want that to be the refined crystal right there, which is super useful. So I would try and I tried to limit my stash and bring it lower and lower. That way I didn't have to worry about risking giving up something super good for something, you know, for an extra slot that I don't need. One other thing that helps with stash management, um, that's one, uh, one part why I do think that doing the bounties or doing the escort contracts isn't necessarily a bad thing to do. Um, especially at the early stages of your grind, is you can find schematics. You can find a bunch of the Tier 1 uh, challenge schematics just for doing the contracts, and those help a ton with getting the ammo mods. Um, multiple challenges require you have some kind of effect on your gun, some kind of fancy damage. You see right here, electric damage. That is your electricity, your dead wire ammo mod. You need to have fire damage. That is your ammo mod, your napalm burst. You need to have frost damage right there on the cat MR. That is your snowflake, your little cryo freeze ammo. And then the other one you need to have, the other one you need to have toxic damage. That is your brain rot ammo mod. I don't think the shatter blast is ever necessary on anything. I could be wrong on that one. That one might just be a story mission, a tier one story or a, a story act mission that you need to work on. I don't think that one's super necessary. Yeah, that is why it is beneficial to do the um the both tier one or tier two, or if you get to the high enough level where you can do the tier three contracts, that's where it's beneficial. I have this neat little handy dandy. Uh, chart that I found on Google that shows you what you have to do to get some of these these um, schematics for these guns. Some of them are only doable in the story. The uncommon, the, the green and blue tool are only done in the story. Uh, same with death perception perk, quick revive uh, schematic, uh, as well as the cryo freeze ammo mod that's done in the act two, or the or it goes all the way up to the wonder waff um, for the wonder weapon. But a bunch of these, as you can see, are in either the there's five. There's going to be five tier one contract schematics, brain rot, napalm, speed, cold, stamina, and deadshot daiquiri. And then there's five in the tier two zones. You got the raw crystal, the jug, the PhD flopper, dead wire, and shatter blast. And then you have five that can only be done in the tier three zones, the epic tool, refined tool, elemental pop, tombstone, and ray gun. None of those are necessary at all. You don't need to have any of those. Again, like I said earlier, you don't have to go into the red zone. It's never required for this camel grind. You don't need it for any reason doesn't really help you out all too much none of, some of those could be beneficial but they're not really too too useful for your camel grind journey you can only use one refined crystal per 16 hours so it's not like that's going to be that big of a difference on your grind but some of these uh ammo mods once i was able to get all five mods and anytime i needed one for a gun for the challenge i was doing bam i could just make it myself rather than worrying about getting lucky and finding it that helped a lot if you are uh, if you do not have this option available and you do need to find an ammo mod to go for your challenge, what I found was the best way was these the little ether nests, I ether nests, whatever you want to call them, was these little ether nests, this little symbol on the map. You go in, there's like four or five cysts, it spawns a bunch of zombies. Super duper easy to complete. You just go in, take those out real quick. I think a guaranteed ammo mod of some type is going to spawn from each of these. So all that you really have to do is drop in uh is just kill that and just hope there's like you you know you have a, you have a one in five you got a 20 percent chance to get the one you're looking for if you know that you have another gun that you're grinding towards two um that you're grinding towards that you're gonna need that ammo mod you can bring that back save in your backpack that's what i did throughout the grinds but again yeah the the main the main concept you want to be going for here is you want to combine your challenges as much as possible uh you want to combine your challenges so a, a perfect example is the lockwood 680 shotgun you need 250 kills 
you also need 250 hip fires. You have no reason to waste any time getting kills while aiming down sights with this shotgun. It's a shotgun, you don't really need to do that anyways. Go so every single kill you should be should be hip fire. And you shouldn't bother even using the gun and going for these challenges until you have the dead wire ammo mod that you can put on your gun to give it electrical damage. That you need those same exact 250 kills. And then the entire time that you were going for all those hip fire kills with electric damage, you might as well be going for the 20 times without taking damage challenge all at the same time. That's 200 of them knocked out right there. You'll finish all four of those challenges at around the same time. And then, and then segueing into our next point, next challenge, I think, I think I've covered most, if not all, of the basic challenges. The next challenge is the Golden Enigma or Golden Ivory challenge. That is the exact same across the board for all guns, 100 kills, and extract with that weapon. Now, originally when I started the grind, for a majority of my guns, there was some bug going on. It wasn't working. It wasn't, it, it, you know, that, that wasn't counting for anything if you had even an attachment on your gun. Now, as far as I'm aware, if this challenge is not counting for you, it's because you're using a blueprint on a gun. So you want to make sure that when you are selecting your gun, that mainly, you know, especially on your MW2 guns, you do not want to have any of these blueprints. You just want the basic, basic level again. You do not want to use the blueprint that still causes issues i don't know if at the time you're watching this video that has been fixed yet but that would be my one main thing to stray away from they're not really super necessary uh, if you're going for this challenge your gun should be max level you should be able to put your own attachments on at this point anyways so 100 kills and extract now the one thing that slows you down about this challenge the most you can only do two guns per game if you were being super optimized and super efficient with your time the best you can do is two guns per game because again you can only exfil with two guns so um one thing that we did find out throughout the grind is if you get if you get all four of your basic challenges done in one game, you drop in with a brand new gun, get all four of your basic challenges done, one of the challenges alone is always going to be 250 kills. That same 250 kills, as soon as you see all four camo challenges pop up, you have your 100 kills that count. You do not have to get a single extra kill after you've seen the fourth challenge pop up. You do not, as long as you've gotten 100 kills with that gun in the game, uh, you have your 100 kills. You can just go and exit with that gun. It should be gold, no problem. So realistically, you can drop in with one basic level gun and get four camel challenges and one gold challenge. Bam, five challenges done for one gun each game. You have an hour if you play the game through all the way to the final X film. You should have no problem dropping in depending again on what your challenges are and how effective you are with your time. You should be able to drop in, get four challenges done for one gun, four challenges done for another. That should be 100 kills on both those guns. X fill, two gold guns per game in under an hour realistically if you're being super effective and optimized and efficient with your time and all that good stuff two gold guns per game in one hour long game should be a pretty standard rate for anybody it's not like your skill level determines um it's not like in multiplayer where your skill level determines how many kills you can get it's zombies you're fighting zombies you shouldn't really struggle too hard to be able to get this stuff done and again all of the zombies camos all the gold challenge camos for all guns, all the exact same, 100 kills and extract. It is super easy, by the way. If you were doing MW, I mean, if, you, if you're doing all the MW3 guns, the RGL and the gutter knife and the crambit, super duper easy to get these done, by the way. You just drop in, 250 kills, bam. As soon as you see that pop up, you are good to exit. We tested it, we checked for sure. I even dropped in uh, one game. Yeah, one game with both melee weapons, bam. 250 kills of one, bam. 250 kills of another, exfil, 500 kills, in, out, two gold guns, 15 minutes maybe. Super simple, super easy, and you also, I didn't do it, but you have a lot of melee guns and launchers. I was psycho, I did the launchers for the MW2 guns, just felt like it, MW2 launchers, I wanted them done. A lot of people said, why'd you do these? Why'd you do the launchers if you don't have to? You can just do the pistols or something like that. I just wanted to. I wanted to have bioluminescent on the Joker. That's all there is to it. Was, it. was it the smartest, most efficient way? No, but I wanted it, so I did it. Now I got it. There you go, easy peasy, lemony squeezy. So that pretty much covers it for all the basic challenges and all the gold camo challenges. Now on to what I consider to be personally the more the the most boring part of the grind because it's very repetitive. What I did was I got all of my guns gold. This is what I recommend too. I recommend unlike the MW2 camo grind where I said don't get all your guns gold and then do the platinum challenges. In this game, when going for Zircon scale and spinal husk. I recommend you get all your guns that you're gonna get gold. I, I recommend that you do all that. That way you have the maximum amount of guns to choose while doing this because again, you can only do two gold guns per game. With a pack of punch kills, you can get as many done per game as possible. The most that I got done in one game was it, with just focusing on doing this, I managed to get, as you can see right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, and nine. I got nine guns, nine guns with the 300 pack punch kills in one game. I got nine guns on. Granted, this was before the exfil strategy got nerfed, but now it is a lot harder to find zombies to kill. But if you are just focusing on doing this, and more so, I didn't, I, I had one friend help me one time, but throughout the entire grind, if you have a friend to help you do this, you can make it fly by so much faster. Uh, if they drop you a gun that you need, I had, I just so happened to get lucky that my uh, my teammate that game had two guns that I needed to uh, get my pack of punch kills with. So he dropped those for me real quick and I dropped them back when I was done. Yeah, this is where a little bit more preparation goes in to, for, for this part of the grind. If you want to, again, if you want to effectively maximize your optimum efficiency and all that good stuff. But one thing you'll notice, none of these guns, none of these challenges here require you to have a pack of punch gun. So anytime I was doing the entire original grind, anytime I found a rock, a pack rock, not a crack rock, a pack rock, anytime I found one of these, I would go in and I would sew in my stash. At one point, I had like 10 of them. My entire stash plus the extra stuff was just pack a punch rocks because I knew that coming down and coming into the pack a punch challenge, once I was done with all my gold guns, I knew that I was going to need the pack a punch a lot. There's no point in getting a kill with a gun if it's not pack a punch. So I was making sure I was dropping in and again, I want to be as a active and efficient as possible the way to do this the meta the meta strategy is you want to drop in with gun number one gun number one insured slot gun number one that you need to get um the, again ideally you want both or all your guns to be gold already and they all they need is the pack punch kills you want gun number one and then gun number two you want both your insured slots both guns you need to get pack punch kills one rock you want one rock and then whatever perks and other fancy stuff you need but you want one rock and then two guns that you need to get pack punch kills for drop in and go and get go pack a punch your gun right away and in the time it takes you to get your 300 pack a punch kills that gun maybe do a contract or two while you're at it the all those kills should have earned you 5,000 points ethereum whatever it's called should have earned you enough to be able to go and pack a punch your second gun that way you don't have to waste a rock you don't ever have to waste any time running around doing contracts getting kills with a gun that's not pack a punch so yeah that's that's the most efficient way and then in the you know the time it takes you to do those contracts and get more kills with that extra gun you can if you really really wanted to if you really want to be dedicated and get as many guns done in one game as possible you can then go hit the mystery box or one thing i noticed is the wall guns are only mw3 guns so if you're doing the mw2 grind the only way to do this is to hit the box um which i didn't really find too effective so i didn't do that all too much mw3 guns you could at least go and hit a wall by or also hit the box but at that point, yeah, you should, by doing more contracts, I was doing a lot of safeguards at this, or escorts at this point, um, more bounties or tier one contracts that you finish super quick and super easy. Uh, I had a bunch more money. You can go hit the box or you can go hit a wall by, grab that, pack a punch that gun. The only thing when doing that though is you are going to lose your insured slot. So another bit of preparation that I would do is for some reason the game gets really buggy. If you drop in and you have insured slot one in your primary weapon slot, and then insured slot two in your secondary weapon slot. After the game's over, for some reason, your insured slot two turns into a contraband. I don't know why. You don't lose the insured slot, but I just would take that contraband gun then and I would put it in my contraband stash. Yeah, you want so that way you can have your your contraband stash. You can have that with a bunch of your guns. With like I have my builds, my camos on these. You don't want a bunch of these random wall by two attachment guns that aren't good. You don't want a bunch of like if you're going for only MW3 camos. You don't want your contraband stash to be full of MW2 guns or vice versa. Like right now, I'm going for MW2 camos. I don't want my contraband stash to have a bunch of MW3 guns. I'm done with all those. But my whole contraband has been erased of MW3 guns. And I fill a bunch of MW2 guns that I'm going for camos on in here. That way, if I am doing the absolute most and I've got my two pack punch guns done in one game and I want to go and, you know, I still have 30 minutes. I have 20,000 points to use. I want to go and hit the mystery box and hopefully find another gun on this is where the spreadsheet comes in handy you can check and see oh do i need this gun do i need this gun still oh i haven't gotten my pack punch kills done with the f tag recon i got that out of the wall or out of the mystery box i can use that that way you can drop your contraband gun you can drop your insured gun not have to worry about not having a slot and wasting time because then bam you have a whole contraband of other guns that you can use for this grind too one other thing that i found helped too with the whole getting a bunch of money to try and have uh, as many chances to hit the mystery box as possible or the wall buys. Having a teammate running around doing contracts. Again, this is a lot easier during the Xville strat days. Um, having a teammate who ran around and did a bunch of contracts and got the money for your whole squad while you just sit there killing zombies in a certain spot. That's not really a vibe anymore because most of the best way to get 
zombie kills is by <clears throat> is by having a contract and not doing it. That's kind of a little, a little bit more difficult nowadays. All right, now that we're done with that, what I consider to be the most boring part of the grind, that brings us over to the last part, what I consider to be the hardest part of the grind. Because again, the hard part of the special or elite kills is finding the bosses that you need to kill. Now, I think the difference between special and elite, special is just mangler, mimic, disciple. Elite is those named bosses, usually the ones you're going to get from a bounty. The named disciples, named manglers, named uh, mimics. And again, so we kind of we kind of glanced over this earlier, but what I found to be the most effective ways to look for any and all specials or elites, um, you got the obviously the most basic way, the guaranteed way to get an elite zombie is a bounty, whether that be in tier two, tier three, tier one. Grabbing one bounty equals one elite boss. They are going to have more health, and if you grab that in the Tier 1 zone, they're still relatively easy to kill. Tier 2, specifically if you get a Tier 2 Disciple, those things, if your guns are not, you know, pack a punch properly or rarity up where they need to be, that can be an absolute nightmare to fight because those Disciples will just continue to heal themselves over and over, and they take forever to kill. Or Tier 3 is just going to be an all-around nightmare to fight. But yeah, again, the bounties, mainly in Tier 1 is where I would start. Tier 2, if you've got a strong enough gun, those are always a guaranteed way, but the only thing about those is you got to get in the car, grab the bounty, drive the bounty, kill the bounty, get in your car, drive to another. This whole time, you've only accomplished one. So then the one way I was doing it a lot, and the one way I found to be very successful this second time around during the MW2 gun grind, is I would just do the escorts. Do the armed escorts again. Those are a great way to find manglers. The three to eight manglers per time is super duper efficient, super effective, easy to get done. And you could do four, five, six contracts as long as they continue to spawn on the map. You do those, and by the time you know you're done with all those, that should be at least both your guns done in one game. Twenty, twenty is all you need. Um, one thing I would recommend while going from you know con whether you're doing bounties or you're doing those uh, escorts, one thing I would do <clears throat> is travel through the orange zone and again visit those high traffic. You know, increase the likelihood for special spawns that we showed earlier. Can you just throw the map up right here, please, if you will, with, with the little with the little highlighted areas. Throw that up. Um, I, I would travel through those or as well travel through the infested strongholds. Just drive by those, shoot real quick. If there are any mimics inside, get them to come out, kill them real fast. Bang, they're really easy to kill. Again, as long as ideally you want to have a pack a punch two or pack a punched gun to go into the tier two zone. But if you don't need, if you don't have one, that shouldn't be the biggest deal. If you're just driving by and fighting these bosses, it'll just take you a couple extra bullets, a couple extra clips, mags, whatever you want to call it, uh, to get those finished. But just drive past the infested strongholds and drive past the uh the high traffic zombie areas high traffic special spawn areas kill any of those real quick as you're on your way from contract number one to contract number two and then what seemed to be the most consistent way is again this outlast contract in the tier two zone there's a couple of different spawns for them uh those when when trying to get the specials to spawn when doing that you want to get it up to like again 50 60 70 percent uh exit the building that'll bring all the specials out chasing you you kill them all while fighting off the dogs and the tier two zombies. Uh, and that is an easy, consistent way to get them coming over and over and over and over again. And again, one thing I did is that, that same concept. I'll have my one gun that's very clearly stronger than my other gun, whether that be in rarity, it's blue, it's purple, whatever. Uh, pack a punch higher. Um, you want to have your one strong gun, do most of the damage to all the bosses with that one, then switch to your other gun and finish them off with that one, get the kill shot on it. That makes it super easy to be more resourceful and not waste either your rarity tools or your pack rocks or even your money in game if you're limited uh, that way you don't have to waste it on you know one gun at a time when you can just beef up one gun make that gun super effective and just wipe through the specials and then just kind of like time your shots real easily to get it with the weaker gun so that will cover pretty much everything that i could possibly think of for the ultimate zombies camo guide both mw2 and mw3 guns if there's any specific questions you want to you need to know that i didn't answer in the video make sure you comment uh, I will try and answer those in the comments as fast as possible. Maybe pin them if it's a, a common question that people got. Other than that, don't forget to like the video, comment anything, any thoughts you have, any ideas you have for what I can do better. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. The next integration of Warzone, the top tier Warzone console content you can see coming at you just a few days or by the time you're watching, it might already be out. So make sure you're sub checking out those other videos. Make sure you are following Reboy on all other socials, Reboy on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, all those good stuffs. Um, what does Jay got to say? What does Jay got to outro? And be sure to have a great day.